guide dogs. Previously on the journey of a guide dog, Matthew shared how we pick our guide dog mums and dads. It's not a finger in the air or a pin in the board that we choose a guide dog dad. And Tom took us through our breeds and what traits we look for in our life-changing guide dogs. This is guide dog bum Kim. She's a five-year-old golden retriever. It's her third litter, and today we're going to do her ultrasound scan at the National Centre. Oh. We scan our guide dog mums generally around halfway through pregnancy, so it works out at around four weeks and a couple of days into their gestation, that's their pregnancy. That's the best time to scan, and it's the best time actually to count numbers. And the reason that we do it at four weeks is that the little embryos are big enough to see now. They're not too big that they would um, sort of overcrowd each other so we can look at them individually. So we start by clipping just a little bit of hair from our abdomen, which we've already done. We've cleaned it all down. And this is just so that you can get a good contact with the probe on the scanner. It's fairly accurate. What we're looking for is some black spherical shapes, really, that's what they look like, which indicate the start of life, really. That will give an indication of how many puppies we're likely to expect. And there you will see the first little embryo. It's only around two centimetres big at the moment, so still very small. Okay, so that looks like a nice, healthy puppy. I'm just moving it really slowly along the left horn and you can see the second one come into view there. Our guide dog mums and dads are all looked after out in our breeding dog volunteers' homes. It's a really, really good setup. Dogs live there with their volunteers for the duration of their career and beyond. It's a lovely environment and somewhere that they're relaxed as well, especially for our mums that are going to ideally give birth in that home as well. It's quite an intense period. I'm probably around for 11 weeks off from when I scan them and I confirm pregnancy. I'll be seeing them every week right up until the puppies leave their home and I take them into the National Centre. Guide dogs are very, very good. We provide pretty much 99% of all the equipment that volunteers will need for giving birth and for rearing a litter and for pregnancy. So things like disinfectant, cleaning materials, the bed that the mum will give birth in, extension sort of panels for when the pups grow so they've got more space, we'll provide toys, the correct diet, anything else really that the holders may need for that journey really. Around 90% of our pups are born in homes like this and then 10% are born within our national centre. Obviously they're well looked after, they've got trained staff there but it's just you can't replicate that home environment there. Some of the guide dog mums will come to the National Centre to give birth and raise the puppies here. It could be due to health issues with the mum, volunteer circumstances or veterinary provision. So there's numerous reasons why they may come and, and um, actually give birth with us rather than in the volunteers' home. We have specialist facilities at the National Centre to look after the guide dog mums and the neonatal pups. We have a bed sit so a guide dog mum can go in that area and staff can be with her around the clock. We have specialist units where the neonatal pups and the guide dog mum will go after she's given birth. They have underfloor heating, specialist um, cooling systems, as well as CCTVs, so that we can keep an eye on her and monitor her and the newborn pups throughout, as well as qualified staff that have lots of experience with uh, birthing process. Puppies can be born at the National Centre or in the volunteers' home, but it's always a preference really for the pups to be born in the guide dog mum's volunteer home, where they're in that home environment and they stay with the family and they're socialised in that environment. Post-birth, we will scan mum to make sure that there's no pup still hiding in there and that she's actually finished giving birth. Once she's settled and all the pups have had a feed, we will bath her because the birthing fluids actually can cause skin irritation and scalding. So we do that once she's finished, settle her back down with the pups. As each pup is born, we'll mark them with a little dot of nail varnish. 
We may mark them on the fore leg or the hind leg and it just helps us identify each pup. It means that then we can weigh them and we will monitor their weight every day for the first sort of five days. Then we'll start monitoring it every two days and then it'll become a weekly thing as they get a few weeks old. That helps us ensure that they're putting on weight, that if we find anything that we need to monitor or we're concerned about a pup in any way, at least we can identify them. As you can see with a litter of sort of five, five yellow Labradors sometimes, it's, it's not the easiest to identify them as they're growing. Again with mum, with her we're checking things like discharge, milk production um, and her general weight as well because some of them will start losing a little bit of weight because they put so much effort into the milk production for the pups and we have to monitor that and monitor her feeds and just make sure they're all happy, healthy, interacting, developing well and moving. Coming up next, find out how our guide dog puppies develop from birth to eight weeks old in one of our volunteer breeding dog holders homes.